Hey guys, Odin here, the coach of Davos Rainbow Six, and I'm here to recap week 4 in this episode of the After Action Report. In our match against Elevate, we knew we would be in for a close match as our stage 1 and stage 2 matchups were close. For map selection, we ended up with Oregon. After a back and forth on attack and defense from both sides, we unfortunately fell 5 7 to Elevate. May well lock it in, plant going down, Jackie Wu and Pika. The pistol, the refrag, it's all Pika versus Onigiri. Time is on the line, but Pika gets it done. A one versus three clutch for the Alibi, and Diwolves finally break that curse. He's gonna just delay that out, and this Diwolves push is starting to become a lot more linear here, Dev. 26 seconds, oh. that's a nice shot for Pika. Nerex goes down on Igiri. Doesn't have a lot of options here as Napew is swung upon Pika once again. Bunny goes down. Two players left for Elevate. Could this be the first attack win on Laundry? As Onigiri steps up, traded. BG Man with the shotgun. As Die Wolves, they have the info, but BG Man has the clutch potential. And that Diffuser gets down on the ground. Shotgun devilishly trying to deal with these angles. They both line up, but he can't land the shot. I think overall the performance was okay. Compared to last time, our attacks improved a lot. But sadly, our defense weren't as strong as last time. I'm especially disappointed with our last two rounds. We could have easily closed them out, but sadly we didn't. And ended up losing 5-7. If we would have won those rounds, it would have been the way around and we would have won 7-5 against Elevate. Moving over to our second match in Apex South, we faced up against the undefeated Invictus Gaming. Coming into the matchup, we were confident. We ended up playing on Café and after an even attack set, we clean swept our defense side and took the match 7-3, giving us the win. After the match, we spoke with Idi to get his thoughts on the win and how the team played. Uh, first, it was outstanding, I would say, because like, we won against them in a dominating way. Uh, we are kind of used to their playstyle, so yeah, we are good at controlling them. And our GC play, I really work out at them during the match, during the whole match. Yeah, I bet they like it. Their control that way instead, Denise Rappel, ED. Oh, that's a great start and a need to follow up there, the 2k. The Claymore was the first pick, but Luna does trade one back. That's the pitfall as they have control down below the defense, that is, but Divers are still going to commit to the plan. Yeah, this is going to be an early plant here for the okay, Diawalls. Right. The question is, though, the retake potential. Is it viable for Invictus? Luna seeing if he can get some prowess from outside that white stairs window. Instead, has to find the kill onto Jackie Wu after he got one onto Jordan. Now, suddenly, time against Invictus here. And not only that, but they've just lost Luna. Speak easy, such a talented player. But in a one versus three, plant already down. Time against him. Very much impossible, especially with Pika on that cocktail window. Great start from Diewolves. So like we decided to play with our sub Shadow just after our LA match. So we didn't have much practice with him yet, but yeah, he still has a great first pro league match and it impressive everyone. And so yeah, he outfrag IG in game, so mm, I'll say it's good for him. But yeah, we still found out there are still some spaces for him to improve to get him better. Does have an angle though, and a nitro. Can he create two 1v1s? And obviously the health for Joe and Speakeasy, both neither at full. Oh, should have information. He's got a nitro cell here, and he's gonna throw it out. He's gonna get this. Oh, he got shot, shot, shot out! It got shot out now. Joe can get the diffuser down. He'll have Speak Easy watching this angle. Oh win the first fight! Win the first, and maybe you'll win the second. Oh, yes, you will see play! Cooks them up, puts them into the pan, makes a souffle out of IG. The Die Wolves, they go from Cubs to Wolves in this one. We continue our Apex South run against Wildcat on the 7th of October. So be sure to tune in over on twitch.tv slash rainbow6 and show the Wolfpack some support. Moving on to the Taiwan League, we ended up with Coastland for our second outing against Velocity9. And the result this time was much closer than our previous matchup in week 2. After gaining match one multiple times throughout the match, Velocity 9 falls over time where we were able to take the win 8 7.
，从雷神丢丢完之后抓到了，真的好了，被被击杀，靠着两人之力成功扛住了，残局多名成员七比七，比赛继续延续，道具在资源交换交换。持续的徘徊，但对方名将，对方兄弟还是。So we took them into a really frag heavy map, Coastland, and they are a really talented and frag heavy team. Some rounds they basically just outfragged us, and then some other rounds we basically just threw because they managed to clutch like a one v three, for example. Some rounds we played really well. Having some nice executes or roam clear, but then some other rounds we made some crucial mistakes that costed us the rounds. So I would say that our performance was alright. Moving into our last matchup against Team Shepherd, we did round running on Shalee and took the match with a swift 7-3. I think our performance was great. The team had some fun on our favorite map. And we took the full three points. We are feeling really good. We are confident. That we will take down Wildcat in our next Apex South match, and then for the Taiwan League, we are really confident that we will go flawless the whole week. That rounds out our week in the Taiwan League. We are back into the action against King in the North and Ordinary Zion on the 9th and 10th of October over on Twitch.tv/Rainbow6. And that's everything for this week's recap. Be sure to tune in to Direwolf's social media for all match results and more.